We are going to run through a quick design in making a toolbit holder for one of our small desktop CNC machines. We're going to calculate the hole size and depth and then our block size width and depth in order to create a part for the CNC. In this project you can go down to parameters and look at all the parameters. We've calculated the actual thickness of the part. It was coming out of 1.09 stock, so we put that into our parameters first. And based on the size of our material, we're going to make a 6 inch by 6 inch block. We're going to be using quarter inch bits. And we're going to make sure that the bits themselves go two thirds of the entire thickness of the part. The spacing between the bits in the x and y direction are half an inch. And we have 10 bits in each direction. Okay. This equation here allows the bits to be centered on the block. Feel free to adjust as needed. I'm going to hit OK since this is predefined for me and based on one of the pieces we used in class. If we need to just get the 2D sketch, we can turn on this mode and take off this component and we have a 2D sketch of anything that's adapted through the parameters. Once you have your design that fits the needs of the machine and the actual uh, part, we're going to move into the manufacturing tab. Our first step is to create a new setup. So under the cam menu, click setup. We measured our stock. So let's move over to the stock tab and choose fixed size box. Stock measured 6.75 by 6.25 and the height was the same we're actually not facing or anything we're just cutting the profile out and that was 1.09 inches we'll keep the position in the center and I'm gonna round up to the nearest 1,000th I'll move back to the setup tab and make sure that we are centered on the top of your block here that will be our X and Y and then our Z is pointing up. I'll hit OK, and we've just set up our first piece. We're going to create two different operations, one to drill the holes, and then another to cut the square profile of the part. In order to do the drilling, which we'll do first, we'll go to the drilling operation. We don't have a tool selected yet for this, so I'm going to go to select my tool and I'm going to create a new uh, mill tool. We could use a flat end mill to drill these holes, but I have a small quarter inch bit that we'll use and then we'll clean them out with an end mill to flatten them. So let's start at the general tab. Let's call this 0 0.25, 118 degree drill bit. And we'll scroll down and click drill. There are two flutes to the drill. The diameter is going to be 0.25 and the rest we can leave the same. The flute length just needs to be deeper than our material, which it is. I'm going to move over to holder and I'm just going to exit that out. And I'm going to go to the feeds and speeds tab. My spindle speed is 10,000. I'm going to go to the highest amount. And I want my plunge to be about 12. That should be nice and slow and take a little bit of material off at a time. For the post processor, we're going to call this tool number 5. And I'm going to disable coolant. I'm calling this tool number five for now because I have a few tools already in here and I'll know that when I ask for five it's my quarter inch drill bit. I'll hit OK. Now I have that drill selected. I'll hit OK again and again there's my quarter inch drill. I'll move to the geometry tab next. I'm going to click one of my holes only and then click select same diameter. All the holes should be the same, so it should select all of the holes. I'm going to choose the Heights tab, and I like to rotate my object to the front face. And here I can see that 
the tip of my drill bit is going to leave a small and I want to go a small angle and I want to make sure that this is flat. So the bottom is going to be whole bottom. In order to see this well, you can go to display settings and visual style and we can do wireframe with hidden edges. Now we can see the bottom of the hole. I'm actually going to offset this in the positive direction by 0 0.01. And that'll raise my drill bit off the floor a little bit. My top height is my whole top. My feet height and my stock top and retract height can stay the same. And I'll move to my cycle. We're going to do drilling and we'll do deep drilling, full retract. It asks for a pecking depth. So how far is each one going to go? And 0.05 is fine for now. Okay. If we wanted it to sit in that hole, we could do a dwell, but we're not going to do that. We're going to peck and come up, peck and come up, and make sure it fully clears. We'll hit OK, and that should formulate our part. If we pull back, we can see all of our holes and all of our operations. I'm going to change my visual style back to shaded with visible edges. I'm going to right-click my drilling operation and hit create derived operation. Click the drill and I'm going to go back to my tool and change my tool, add another tool and I'm going to call this tool number six and this is going to be a flat end mill. This has two flutes and we're using a spiral upcut bit. The diameter is also 0.25 and my flute length is one inch on this tool. I don't need a holder, so I'm gonna remove that. And for my feeds and speeds tab, again, I'm gonna bring this to 10,000 RPMs. My cutting feed rate is going to be 16 on this machine. And my ramp can be nine. My plunge can also be nine. That'll take a light pass, but I don't have a powerful spindle on this machine. I'll make sure that it's number six and I have no coolant. I'll hit OK. I'll select that tool. And now I'm going to go to my geometry. It's going to be the same holes. Now my heights, I'm going to remove this offset. And that's going to clear to the bottom. So when I look at that front view again and I bring up that wireframe view, it goes right to that bottom edge and should flatten out my holes, only removing a little bit of material. I'll move to the next cycle tab and I'm going to drill through this in one pass. So I'll do drilling, wrap it out, and it should clear my part in one quick pass and I'll hit OK. I'm going to save this just to make sure those operations stay. My next step is to add the contour for the edge. So I'll go to my 2D and 2D contour. I'm going to use the same quarter inch tool that we just created and I'll move to the geometry tab. I'll change my visual style and where it asks, I'm going to select this bottom edge here. Make sure it's the bottom edge and not the top. The next tab in heights, I'll go to my front view and I'm going to be mounting this with bolts and double sided tape so I don't foresee it moving. I don't need tabs or anything. This is meant to be a simple operation. My bottom height is the selected contours so that's good for any unevenness since we're not facing anything i'm going to make a negative point oh oh five just to bring the bit a little bit below the part and that'll go into my sacrificial uh, table on the passes tab i want to go down to multiple depths and this is where I can set my step downs so I don't cut everything in one part. For my step down, I normally should do about half the bit max, 
but again this isn't a heavy duty spindle router and we're cutting some wood so I'm gonna do 0 0.05 and I can use even step downs that's all I need to touch I'm not doing a finishing pass around here I can sand this part scroll back up and I'll make sure everything is the same make sure that compensation is in the computer we don't want to do compensation here it's whatever is built into the software which we're not worrying about we're also making sure that this is climb milling so that we cut the right direction with the bit in the linking tab we're just going to select keep tool down where it says maximum stay down two inches should be fine we're going to have a slight lead in so the bit is going to come in and then move into the part in order to reduce any uh, rubbing on the side of the part. We won't select a ramp and we'll just hit OK. We'll let that path generate and we should get quite a few passes moving down our part. We've just finished all of our holes and our 2D contour and we can move to simulation. At the top here click the simulate or you can right click your setup and hit simulate. We'd like to simulate all of our uh, operations. So before we do that, I want to make sure the tool is shown, the tool path is shown, and I like to show the stock. And I change the operation to material, and I like wall paint. It's easier to see. We should be able to see our part come through as we start cutting it. All right, I'm going to hit play. And we can see it's drilling our holes. I'll speed this up because there's a lot of holes. And then once it gets to the milling operation, we'll slow it down. And here we should be changing our tool. And there's our mill tool coming in and just cleaning out those holes. Should flatten our bottom quite nicely. Again, I'm gonna speed this up. And I just wanna see how that, see how that moved in quite nicely. This looks like a good speed for now. We'll obviously test it on the machine and tweak as needed. And the lead in and out looks fine. I'll speed it up a little bit and we can see everything looks good. If I take stock off, we can see our part and stock on and everything looks really good. I'm gonna close the simulation. I like what I have and I'm gonna save it. I'll hit OK. From here I need to bring this to the post processor. So in order to do that we can right click our setup and hit post process. Make sure you click the whole setup and not one of your operations. You wanna post everything. We'll click post process it's asking me for a configuration folder and I have a specific folder on this computer for posts. Your posts should line up right here. This is the machine that I'm using. If you have other post processors, they would show up here as well. You can edit your post processor. If you hit open config, we're not going to mess with that right now. It's asking us for our output folder. This doesn't matter because when I post, it's actually going to ask me where to save it. We can change things in our post processor here as well. I'm going to leave all of this stuff and make sure that my extension is NC for numerical control and I'm not opening my NC because it'll open up brackets. To find your post processor, you can go online to HSM posts on Autodesk and look for what you're using. We're using a small carbide 3D machine. You can just hit download, save it to your folder, and it should pop up right here. I'll click post, 
And again, it does ask me, I'm gonna save this to the desktop and I will call this toolholder.nc. I'll save. And now I can bring that part to, there's my G code. I can bring this G code to the machine and we can see everything looks pretty good to start.